What is good YouTube? Today we've got something slightly different for you guys. We're going to be actually doing a tank tier list today. So as we previously have been doing, we're going to be judging the different tanks based off of their damage, which is actually quite important for content such as Mythic Plus, which I'm mainly going to be judging it off of. Obviously their tankiness, because you wouldn't be a tank without your tankiness, would you? And also the utility they actually bring to the group as well. So they're the kind of three main things we're going to be judging these specs off of. Right before we dive in, 94% of you guys aren't subscribe to the channel but the more i remind you the more of you sub so if you're enjoying the content drop your boy a sub we're going to be dropping dragonflight content every single day but let's get back on with the video but yeah obviously this is all subject to change we've seen some specs i won't mention any names get some ridiculous buffs recently so in due time i do believe that that will slightly get reverted not all the way let's hope but yeah some of the tanks have definitely benefited recently shall we say and yeah, this is all obviously my opinion. However, like before with the previous content, I feel like most of my opinions will be shared by the majority of the community for the most part. So let's get into it then. We're actually going to start off with the Blood Death Knight, which I am going to bang straight in the A tier. Blood Death Knight coming into Dragonflight is a very solid tank. It remains unkillable due to their insane resource generation and the numerous amount of CDs that they have at their disposal for literally every pack, specifically in a Mythic Plus scenario, just due to the sheer amount of defenses that the spec actually has. The nice thing about Blood Death Knight is they didn't actually get affected all that much from the 40% buffs to health that we've had recently in damage because unlike some other tank specs, Blood Death Knight's healing is obviously very unique in the way that it works in that it heals you based off of the damage you've previously taken. So obviously this isn't affected as much as other specs because it's not just a flat number that the DK is healing for. It's percentage based so the more damage you take the more you're obviously going to heal. So actually Actually, the Blood Death Knight really benefited from the changes to health and damage because it actually nerfed a lot of the other specs in a roundabout way in comparison to the Blood DK that stayed exactly the same because it's still going to be healing just as much. The Blood Death Knight is still a very spiky tank and if you misplay you are very prone to one shots especially in high keys. But yeah with the spikiness in health I wish good luck to your healers because nothing is changing for the Blood Death Knight in regards to the health being an absolute yo-yo the whole key. But due to how unkillable they are and how much self sustain they have as well the healers can kind of just ignore them. Obviously they are pretty much the most self reliant class in the game in that if your healer does die you can pretty much keep yourself up for eternity which is lovely and I've always always loved that about the Blood Death Knight. So yeah, an overall tankiness of Blood Death Knight is definitely very solid. Just as solid is its single target damage. Similarly to what we've seen in Shadowlands, the Blood DK is pumping some crazy single target numbers on bosses, for example, where it can definitely sustain some respectable DPS. And that's what I kind of like about the tanks in Dragonflight. A lot of them seem to be doing quite a bit of damage, which is only going to encourage more people to play tanks. Obviously, we've seen in previous expansions that we do almost have like a drought of tanks at some points. So I think generally if tanks get more damage in general, people will be more inclined to play them and then you won't be struggling with getting your tank for your weekly mythic 15 or whatever content you need them for but yeah their single target damage is great like we saw in shadowlands that that's just completely carried over along with the survivability but unfortunately the blood dk does kind of fall off in aoe situations which is obviously going to be a lot of mythic plus some raid fights etc although it doesn't matter as much in raids because obviously as long as you've got threat on the mobs the D the rest of the dps will just do all the work for you on the ads if there are any. So yeah, the AoE damage could definitely use some work. This is unfortunately due to having to pick more survivability talents instead of buffing your damage in general. So the Blood DK does lose some damage in that regard, causing their damage to be lower in general, but specifically in AoE. Obviously, as said in my melee tier list video, the DK in general brings a lot of utility to the key, but the Blood Death Knight does bring just that much more. You obviously have AMZ, or AMZ depending on where you're from which is a nice damage reduction and bit of utility for the whole group this is insane specifically for raid but also a mega talent for M plus as well just being able to reduce your whole party's damage by 20% is bonkers so that is definitely a massive piece of utility that the blood death knight brings another thing specific to blood DKs and not DKs in general is obviously Gorfine's grass which is going to be a mass AoE grip that pulls all of the mobs either to you or to the mob that you're targeting 
and using the ability on. This is amazing for content like Mythic Plus where you can just mass interrupt mobs if you need to or displace them if you need to get them out of Sanguine for example. This is just killer utility that the Blood Death Knight brings. Along with now two death grips as well in, in case you just didn't have enough grips and on top of that you can also obviously spec into Abomination's limb and every one second you're going to be gripping another mob. So there is just so much displacement coming out from the Blood DK which is huge for constantly interrupting mobs or like I said if you need to move mobs to a specific place to get them out of Sanguine then you're not going to have any problems with that with the DK. Unfortunately like you'll be seeing for other tank specs the Blood DK suffers from a lack of utility in regard to a party buff that they bring. Obviously, you've got the Brewmasters bringing the physical damage buff or the Vengeance Demon Hunters bringing the magical damage buff. But yeah, unfortunately, Blood DK just doesn't bring any of the sort. So that definitely does hurt it in comparison to the other tanks. And another place where it also falls behind is obviously the old DK mobility. There's a lot of massive circles you need to be jumping out of in Dragonflight. And sometimes you may be struggling as a Death Knight to get out of them because they are some pretty big circles as well. Obviously, also, if you need to move around the area for whatever reason the blood dk is just slower in general in comparison to the other tanks but it still definitely earns its spot in the a tier for this tier list the main thing a tank needs to be good at is surviving and blood dk is one of the best for this the next spec that I'm going to be ranking is the Vengeance Demon Hunter and no qualms about it, this spec is going straight in the S tier. This spec absolutely pumps in AoE and single target, specifically in Mythic Plus. I've seen it do like some crazy numbers like 30k single target sustained on bosses out DPSing a lot of the other damage dealers in the key. Obviously not me though. And on AoE packs, this may as well be a DPS spec. It just pumps some crazy AoE numbers with the Spirit Bomb build. It is literally like having a fourth DPS. But that's what I love about Dragonflight so far. It's all the tanks, like I've said, are pulling their weight in damage as well. And I think that's a really good change for the game. This sheer amount of damage that the Vengeance Demon Hunter has as well doesn't hold them back from picking survivability talents as well, which is a huge benefit to the class. Their survivability is solid across all content, thanks to a lot higher uptime on demon spikes obviously the problem demon hunters vengeance in specific has always struggled with is the uptime on demon spikes obviously when you drop that uptime you need to be kiting and jumping about which is just going to lose dps overall for your group not to mention that you're one melee away from instantly dying to any mob and also they're no longer as spiky obviously vengeance was up there with being as spiky as blood dk at some points especially when they didn't have their defensives up but thanks to just passive damage reduction from class talents and the spec talents itself it now just has a lot more passive damage reduction just really fleshing out the tankiness of the spec where vengeance really shines though is the insane amounts of utility that this spec brings obviously as a vengeance or havoc demon hunter you bring the chaos brand debuff i'm not going to take points away from vengeance for havoc probably being meta and also bringing this debuff as well i'm just going to rank it uniquely but you're pretty much always going to see at least one ranged in your mythic plus group so this is obviously going to benefit them unless they're a hunter you have imprison to skip any mobs if you need which is one of the very few abilities i think there's three or four in total now abilities that actually let you skip mobs because when you cc them with something like imprison or sap the mob won't actually get in combat with you as you walk past them so that is always nice if there's a specific mob or pack you need to skip it's obviously very niche but it does definitely make a big impact when you can actually use it it's got a semi sort of ranged interrupt in disrupt i think this used to be 25 yards back in the day but i believe it is now 10 yards this allows you to interrupt a mob that's just slightly out of the group or even interrupt a mob when you're not stood directly on top of it which is nice if you've got it on a focus macro or something like that because you don't have to constantly be worrying that you're stood on top of this mob to be able to kick it like you would with other melees and other than the chaos brand that they bring the main thing that carries the vengeance utility in general is obviously the sigils the sigils are massive for this class from a utility point you've obviously got sigil of silence which is an aoe silence on a one minute cooldown which is just insane i can't believe that havoc was going to get that at one point being able to aoe interrupt on literally every single pack in mythic plus is going to be huge for the spec and just take that much more pressure off your group in general by not having to kick anywhere near as much as you would without a spec bringing an aoe silence like the vengeance demon hunter with sigil of change you've got like a pseudo sort of gorfiend's grasp type ability where you're able to pull in a load of mobs which counts as an interrupt like an, another aoe interrupt for the spec or if for whatever reason you do lose that 
demon spikes up time that you can just whack down a sigil of chains, jump out the pack with your incredible mobility, and all those mobs will be snared by 70% for 6 seconds. So that is just insane amounts of kiting potential. And because of the snare, your DPS won't actually lose that much damage. Another AoE interrupt for the Vengeance Demon Hunter is Sigil of Misery. Obviously, these sigils do have a slight delay when pressing them. So you want to try and press them in advance by just like a second to allow them to actually pop. And you can also talent into this increasing the damage these mobs take. Any mob that was feared by the Sigil of Misery then gets a damage amp on that mob for a short duration. I do feel like this class is missing another interrupt. An AoE interrupt, actually. Oh, wait, yep. Yeah. That's right, they've also got Chaos Nova. Vengeance now also has access to Chaos Nova. It's no longer just a Havoc spell, which is just another AoE stun, which is incredible for this spec. Like They just have insane amounts of stops and they're all AoE as well, which is gonna take so much pressure off of your group for interrupting all of these mobs and just keeping them locked down as well. And the best thing about it is none of these really DR with each other. You've obviously got a Fear, which isn't gonna DR with a stun which then isn't going to DR with a silence. So it's not like you're going to end up DRing yourself off of stuns. You're just going to be able to keep these mobs locked down in pretty much every pack because of the short cooldowns as well. This spec is just insane for Mythic Plus. It literally feels like it was made for dungeons and it does such a great job with it as well. So that is why it is my first S tier spec. Speaking of S tier specs, I would put this in its own rank if I could by CBA and it will probably receive some slight nerf soon is obviously the bear. It's obviously going at the top of of S tier if you buffed any spec by pretty much 50% across the board I'm sure it would be worthy of S tier in any regard like I said after getting ignored for most of the beta bears have just received a 50% aura buff for most abilities they have excluding moonfire I think this is definitely the biggest buff I've ever seen in WoW's history and it probably is just in general so obviously that is going to warrant it being one of the best tanks in the game it has crazy AoE damage like we're used to with the bear but this time it's actually now pumping in single target target as well as long as you have the ability or rage to be spending it on maul you will do some considerable single target and aoe damage bears are obviously insanely tanky post buff as well being able to spread moon fires is just going to make every mob that's affected by moon fire deal 10 percent decreased damage to you so that is huge just being able to take 10% less damage from any mob that you afflict with moonfire and obviously now moonfire is hitting one additional target as well with bears being able to take twin moons to this expansion so that's just going to make for big moonfire damage but also big drs from just applying moonfire to everything and taking 10% less damage you also have the recent change to the talent after the wildfire which is absolutely nuts now every 200 rage you spend you'll be chucking out around a 60k heal which which can crit by the way to someone within eight yards of you so as a bear now not only can you tank not only can you do stupid amounts of dps but now you're also just gonna pretty much top off anybody that needs to with your after the wildfire heals to complement that you have the short cds like bark skin and rage of the sleeper which is going to provide some considerable dr to you as well along with survival instincts and probably the best tank tier set in the game bears are definitely a force to be reckoned with now and to add to that as well obviously it's a druid so you have some crazy utility as a druid as well obviously new to the druid class in dragonfly is the mark of the wild verse buff for your party which is obviously just going to increase the damage you deal and, and decrease the damage you take by a nice flat amount which is definitely going to add up over the course of a key you then have stampeding raw for all your dk friends vortex and typhoon you can talent into if you need the extra kiting ability the list really goes on for bear and it is looking unstoppable in dragonfly as long as they don't get a nerf but they will. Hopefully Blizzard doesn't completely gut them again, but then that would be counterintuitive to what they've just done. I just can't see them being this strong going into Dragonflight. Maybe a few tweaks here and there, sending them maybe back into A tier. But bears are just ridiculous right now and definitely deserving of that top spot no spoilers next we have the brewmaster which is probably the weakest of the tanks in general i'm gonna put brew in the b tier b for brewmaster works very nice brew is actually kind of a tricky spec to rank right now this is due to its damage easily being the best out of all of the tanks specifically in aoe but this is all thanks to the ability resonant fist which i'm pretty sure everybody and their nan is anticipating a nerf for it's just putting out stupid amounts of numbers in all forms of content at the moment and even the monk mains are looking for a nerf so so yeah i can't see that lasting too much longer after the nerfs it probably will still contribute quite a decent chunk because it is doing 
that much damage and hopefully they don't completely kill it but regardless of resonant fist they still have some insane aoe throughput in the likes of charred passions and they can obviously get bone dust brew as well which works very nicely with exploding keg for some crazy amounts of burst and if you have the right cooldowns up you can do some decent single target damage as well which is nice for bosses unfortunately though for the brewmaster they are the squishiest of all the tanks they do seem to have more defensives than they've ever had but they do seem to struggle with consistent damage especially from bleeds and magic damage and this spec is probably one of the most reliant on their healers to actually perform to keep them up which i personally don't like as a tank i like to be kind of self-sufficient and if my healer was to die for whatever reason i love being like a blood dk for example just keep myself topped the whole time without a care in the world the Brewmaster was one of the specs that was actually quite hurt from the 40% increase to health because abilities like Expel Harm and Celestial Brew just aren't giving that healing like they used to. It has definitely taken a significant knock in regards to the self-healing that Brew could put out before which obviously leads them to being that much more reliant on their healer to keep them up. Saying this though, Brewmaster has some great utility to bring to the group. They obviously have the 5% physical damage increase for the party, which is looking very nice for Dragonfly as it's looking to be a sort of melee meta. They obviously have the AoE stun and leg sweep that's also on a short cooldown, so that's nice. That's going to be up for pretty much every pack in Mythic+. Plus. If you ever need to kite as a Brewmaster or your group needs to run away from some mobs, for example, you obviously have Ring of Peace, which is a very niche and unique ability that the monk has but it can come in absolutely clutch in some situations and obviously if you need the extra stop as well you have paralysis which can actually work quite nicely with ring of peace as well if you do need to skip any mobs and you don't have a sap or in prison you can paralyze the mob and then use a ring of peace to knock them out of aggro range and then you and your party can sneak on by they do actually bring two more party buffs as well this is in the way of your whole party taking increased healing and also a flat four percent avoidance increase for your party as well which is obviously very nice for mythic plus so yeah i think that warrants the brewmaster sitting in b tier for now it could definitely use some help in regards to its tankiness i'd definitely like to see a few buffs there but being in b tier as the bottom of the tank specs isn't bad going i feel like blizzard have done a decent job in general with tanks this expansion we said that for shadowlands as well but i feel like they've outdone themselves again here we just need a few tweaks here and there and everyone should be excited as a tank main speaking of great tank balance we're also going to put the prop warrior in the s tier i didn't want three s tiers but i think it just does deserve this spot from what i've seen on the beta and heard from people as well is that prop warrior is absolutely slamming damage i've seen many prop warriors out dps actual damage dealers on overalls myself included if you saw my evoker video the other day this is due to their amazing aoe and single target damage obviously your aoe damage is primarily coming from big revenge dam but also nice bleed damage as well if you're taking the bloodborne talent which is going to increase the bleed damage they take from abilities like rend which is going to now be applied by thunderclap and also thunderous roar if you're talenting into that a flat 20 percent increased damage on those bleeds including deep wounds as well is going to be huge for your overall damage and then also obviously on single target you have the big execute damage as well thanks to being pretty much unkillable as a prop warrior you can dump all of your rage into these big executes instead of being worried about sacrificing ignore pain absorbs in higher keys, you can definitely opt into a more conservative, more tanky build, but this is still going to do some respectable damage as well. So yeah, in general, prop warriors are dealing some crazy damage that is definitely not to be slept on. Along with this, prop warriors just do not take damage full stop. Prot has always pretty much been the king of taking physical damage obviously with the shield blocks but as we move into Dragonflight Prot has now also become one of the best tanks for mitigating magical damage as well which is unusual for this spec. From permanent ignore pain to 100% uptime on shield block for those physical damage mobs and then spell block and spell reflect which now is also going to reduce your magic damage taken to deal with the magic damage they are basically permanently immune to all forms of damage. The only exception to this is consistent Consistent magic damage as we've seen from some of the bosses in the dungeons but this can be rectified with an external from a resto druid for example while you wait for your cooldowns to come back up warriors in general are a bit drier on the utility side unfortunately 
They obviously bring Battle Shout, which is going to be huge if it is a melee meta. Just getting that attack power for your group is a considerable buff over the course of a fight. You have Rallying Cry, which is probably one of your biggest utilities. In those clutch moments, you can save your group, just increasing all your party's health. You can also talent into a removal of fears for your whole party, basically being a walking tremor totem. So that is nice as well, but I really am scraping the barrel for Prot Warrior utility, unfortunately. You have abilities like Spear of Bastion that can root enemies in place if you need but again that's not why you're going to be taking that talent shockwave 2 if you talent into that which can do some big damage as well and is obviously an aoe stun but in general prot does struggle from a utility aspect that being said though it definitely earns its place solidly in s tier it is probably the worst of the s tier specs but obviously being an s tier spec i don't even think i can use the word worst but yeah definitely a solid choice if you're looking to main prot warrior in dragonflight finally we have the prop paladin i'm gonna whack prop paladin in a tier behind the blood dk but above the brewmaster monk prop paladin is still pumping damage as always this spec always seems to be doing incredible amounts of damage specifically in aoe with the likes of wings and divine toll and at the right difficulty level you can build your paladin a lot more offensively doing even more damage than we're used to prop paladin easily has one of the highest overall damages out of the tanks it has great single target damage but the aoe is just on another level the aoe burst from prop palette is insane i've seen them bursting over 200k which not even many dps specs actually get to those numbers but you can also sustain this great aoe damage too obviously not 200k but you definitely do sustain some great aoe damage as a prop paladin saying this though the only problem with it is that in higher keys you're going to have to sacrifice these offensive talents and play a much more defensive offensive build which is actually going to hurt your damage quite a bit it would definitely still be a respectable damage that you'll be putting out but it's not the insane aoe damage that you can be putting out if you're specced correctly this class has the most defensives out of all the tanks easily meaning they pretty much have an answer for every situation whether it is a mythic plus in a massive aoe pack the paladin does really never struggle to deal with whatever kind of damage it is taking unfortunately though with the recent buffs to hp and obviously not healing along with it the paladin has taken a hit in regards to self-sustain obviously you used to be able to just top yourself off with those word of glories which is no longer the case you definitely can notice the difference so as long as you've got some good coordination with your healer you can mitigate most of the damage Damage and whatever needs healing up you will just have to be that bit more reliant on your healer for this spec probably only loses out to prop warrior in terms of tankiness it is able to mitigate stupid amounts of damage it's just not quite immune like the prop warrior is paladin in general obviously has some incredible utility as well in the likes of your different blessings like blessing of sacrifice you got blessings of protection which is going to be nice for dungeons like halls of valor with Fenrir when he targets and fixates on someone just bop your teammate and they won't have to run out of the group so it's niche but it works you obviously have the off heals like I mentioned they're not as good as before but they are still off heals which is some nice utility as well you've got devotion aura which is going to reduce damage you and your party takes by three percent and to top it off you also now have a CR as a paladin which I just think is mental paladins were already a very utility heavy class and now this is just that extra reason to bring them along to your group so yeah that is my tier list for the tank it was more so catered towards mythic plus but i feel like with tanks it can translate more to raid as well we have bear at the top of s tier which is probably going to receive some nerfs soon which i reckon will probably bring it down to around a tier somewhere around here i would imagine but overall tanks are in a very good spot brewmaster could use with a few buffs as i said just to lift it up into a tier and then overall the tank balance in general is amazing for dragonflight blizzard have done a solid job once again with the balancing of tanks and obviously this is all subject to change we've got just under two weeks now until dragonflight release so there's still time for some nerfs and some buffs to some specs across the whole game but we will see how that affects their placing on the tier list if you like this video please feel free to drop a like drop a sub to your boy and also if you didn't agree with anything or you've got some feedback for me whatever it is just drop a comment below and let me know why you think bear should be in d tier because it definitely was before but until next time this has been my tank tier list for dragonflight catch you later